make it. Renata just joined. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I defy anybody to, uh, to to not listen to this next hour and feel feel even better when they come off the end of the conversation. Because I always do. If I I actually now access a feeling of joy, I just think of Barry. So. <laughs> And so just to, the, to share something, so one of the things we're going to be working with in the time together is what I call the three fundamentals of life. Now, these three fundamentals are, number one, life, your life has purpose. <laughs> and when you know that and you live a purpose-driven life, the corollary, the result is that you can go MAD. Now, MAD in this case is a wonderful acronym because MAD stands for make a difference. Everybody wants to make a difference in life, right? You can do that with the third fundamental by unlocking the power and the secrets of everyday words and terms. Simple example, WWW. We're doing it right now. If you ask anybody, what does WWW stand for? Invariably, they'll say it has something to do with the internet, right? And yeah. factually speaking, they're correct. But in our world, Muriel, in the world of the positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant, WWW stands for, drum roll, fanfare, da 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 da. What a wonderful world. Um, what a, is the word. So whenever you see now WWW or you hear it, man. You're going to think, oh my gosh, Barry Shaw is singing in my ear. No, it's it's Satchmo or Louis Armstrong singing, what a wonderful world. That's what we do, and when you follow the three fundamentals, purpose-driven life, you can go mad, make a difference, and you can do it with the most simple of tools. Use words and terms and find the good in everything. Lovely. Barry, thank you very much. We'll come back to you in just a second. <laughs> well, I think we've got a really good sense or tone of how this is going to go this afternoon. It's going to be great fun, I've got a feeling. Uh, so just a quick introduction, then we'll – I will know Chris and uh, – Barry are, are dying to, to get started, so we won't delay too long. Uh, so I think uh, Renata's picked up on that straight away. And in terms of everyone who's joined us today, if you could very kindly introduce yourselves in the chat. Um, so just put, uh, whilst we'll know who you are, just put in there a little bit about what you do, what you're really passionate about, and why you're passionate about it as well. And if you've got a killer question for Barry, uh, do ask it in the chat. It really doesn't matter how outrageous it is, I'm sure. Barry will embrace it. Okay, so uh, do, do do go for it. Uh, now, just lost my mouse, which is not terribly helpful. Just give me a second. Uh, now, a very quick introduction of myself. I'm the founder of Business Growth Bureau. Um, I believe in the importance of uh, circular relationships. It's really important that everyone wins uh, in working with you. So all the prospects, the clients, the investors, uh, the ambassadors, uh, the associates, the suppliers, your staff, your teams, um, you need to make sure everyone feels uh, that you've got their in best interests at heart. And guess what? If you demonstrate you care, of course, uh, people will typically uh, do lots of things for you just because they want to and they want to see you succeed. So it's a really nice way of doing business. Uh, Chris, I'd love to. Can you introduce yourself as well? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll probably share my, my purpose in life for a change rather than talking about Happy myself. Nice. I'm the possibility of inspiration, responsibility, freedom and fun. And I choose to be someone who enables others to realize uh, their true potential, whether that's businesses or companies. So I work with leaders. I work with teams. I work with organizations. I help them and support them and cajole them into uh, being um, highly effective, highly engaged um, organizations with less, um, less fear and more love. And we find out of all of that greater performance at the end of it. So... Uh, that's me. I wrote a book, co-authored a book, The Power to Get Things Done, whether you feel like it or not. And I have uh, had it for nine years, uh, a radio show on Voice America called The Business Elevation Show, which is where I got to meet our wonderful guest today, Barry. Lovely. Thank you very much, Chris. Now, Barry, we're going to properly introduce you in just a moment. But uh, I love the description, Ambassador of Joy. I was looking at your website earlier on and uh, you, yourself on LinkedIn and uh, being amazed by your uh, presence on Fox News, uh, UMFRA. Winfrey, is that correct? So in the US, uh, Forbes, CBS as well. So no doubt you'll be sharing some of your experiences to do with that. Um, and uh, uh, Mural, just a very quick introduction from you before we come on to uh, to Barry. Uh, tell us about your involvement with Business Growth Bureau and uh, what you're really passionate about. Uh, okay, uh, for those that don't know me, uh, I work with Rupert. Um, I help our clients with any issues. Um, 
I work with them. I'm passionate about people. I love to see them happy, successful in whatever they do. I like to see a smile on their face. Um, and Barry, every time I wake up in the morning, I think I am absolutely blessed when I look outside. Um, so, you know, that's great. I've got that passion as well. <laughs> great. Thank you very much, Meryl. Now, at this point, uh, Meryl and I are going to duck out the conversation for a while. We'll be behind the scenes moderating the chat. Uh, unfortunately for everyone else here, I will be joining a bit later on. We've also got a very another, another very live wire who's a millennial. Um, so um, called Alex, he'll be joining for about five minutes near the end. Uh, but uh, over now to, to Chris and to, to Barry. And Chris, at this point, if I could let you introduce Barry and uh, go from there. And I'll, well, you're about to drop out. So. Oh, yes. Thank Fantastic. You. Thank you, Rupert. And uh, welcome, everybody. Lovely to see you all um, back here today. Renato, Nikki, Chris, Vernon. We're seeing people who are... Uh, it will be coming familiar names to us, so lovely to be here. And I think you're in for a real treat today with with Barry. Uh, I've um, I've known Barry for it's probably probably a matter of months, but it feels like uh, years because we've done a couple of interviews together when we've interviewed each other. Barry's based over in the US um, on uh, Venice Beach, lovely area, and has I don't know the most incredible background and uh, life experience, which has led him to this journey of joy and. I don't want to say too much more except for welcome because we're going to talk about that story in a moment and we're going to we're going to talk about let's start being even more British and uh, start to really live with joy and we'll explain where that comes from and we'll talk about some of Barry's lessons for life which uh, I have to say have very much inspired my family because on Barry's website he has 11 strategies for for living life with joy and little videos and my family during lockdown I sat there with my 10 year old my 14 year old my wife and we watched all of those videos. And uh, as a family, uh, they had a really positive impact on us. So I'd encourage you uh, to, to think about that as well. So big welcome to Barry Shaw. Good day, beautiful, bountiful, beloved, immortal beings and good looking people. First of all, Chris, a big thank you to you for being together again. A hearty hello to wonderful Rupert Honeywood and a delightful greeting to remarkable Muriel Gibbons. It's a delight and honor, and I'm deeply humbled to be here. I want to make a, a very important point at this moment. The name of the show is Business Growth. And I want people to understand that when we talk about joy, happiness, peace, and love, it sounds fluffy. It sounds a bit uh, esoteric or exoteric. And okay, that's good for an American crazy guy. But, you know, let's talk about things that matter to me, like money, growth in business. I want to assure everybody that what we're discussing today, if you listen carefully, you will be healthier, wealthier, and wiser. They go together. Perfect example. When you live a purpose-driven life, purpose promotes prosperity. Look what Chris and, and, and Rupert were discussing. The ability to find uh, harmony in relationship with other people. So the WWW also stands for, of course, not just win-win, win-win-win, as Rupert mentioned. Everybody that's involved in the venture, whether the venture be profit oriented, non-profit oriented, because in every venture there is profit. The key is what you do with it. In other words, are you there to serve? If you're there to serve, then business grows. It's one of the fundamental laws of life. It's called the law of attraction. So again, we go back to the three fundamentals. Life has purpose. When you live a purpose-driven life, you now, by definition, have the corollary. We like to work with acronyms. So one of the acronyms that I love most is MAD. MAD. Well, MAD goes along with British, right? Because only uh, madmen and Englishmen go out in the moon and the noonday sun. Remember that great quote? So be MAD. But in this case, MAD is a wonderful, positive, purposeful, powerful, pleasant acronym that stands for make a difference. If you're oriented towards being a person who is positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant, you'll make a difference. Why? Because you'll be thinking good thoughts. You'll be speaking good words. You'll be acting in a good way. 
And that brings benefit to the world. That brings prosperity. So we're talking about business growth here. I want everybody to understand that what we're doing is really priming and pumping the prosperity machine. <laughs> Barry, um, I want to, this, this, you know, this is great stuff, but I want people to understand as well where this comes from and uh, you know why people like Upper Winfrey love your work and, uh, and, and how it came to be. And um, you know, you're not just this guy with enormous enthusiasm and love, and and um, you, you're somebody who has had a, a big life experience. And um, tell us a little bit about your life before um, you became, you know, had this illness, which um, which led to you know significant consequences. Um, tell us a little bit about that, and then we'll talk about that experience and what you drew from it, because I think. That will help people to understand the credibility, enormous credibility that you have to Absolutely. share these messages around the world, really, as you do. Really, with pleasure, because what seemed to be a stunning upset in life has turned, of course, to be the greatest opportunity. Now, only I can say that. <laughs> you know, you can't go to, to a hospital room, somebody's completely paralyzed, lying in a bed, and say, hey, this is going to be great for you. You can't do that at the moment. It takes time and to do this. But let's just give you the, the thumbnail sketch. Uh, on September 17th, 2004, I was standing up in the morning, hale and hearty, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. By the way, that's an American expression. And that evening of September 17th, I was in the hospital completely paralyzed from my neck down. I became what's known as a quadriplegic. Nothing on my body moved. Rare disease, it was not a car accident or an auto accident. It was not a spinal injury. A rare disease took over my body and within a matter of hours, I was completely, totally paralyzed. Out of the blue, all that could move was my mouth. Just some statistics. I was in the hospital for many, many months. I was in a hospital bed in my own home for two years. I couldn't turn over by myself. I was in a wheelchair for four years. You can still see my hands don't close yet, 15, 16 years later. I had braces on both my legs, my hips to my ankles, and that was progress. Thank God today I am able to be vertical and ambulatory, albeit with the help of a six and a half foot walking wand made for me by a Zen master but I still can't walk up a stair by myself or a curb. And I have help 12 hours a day, seven days a week. But you hear my voice, positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant, because I, thank God, Chris, have been blessed with one particular great insight. And that is, I have learned the definition of the word smile. <laughs> so everybody loves to smile, right? Like we said before, WWW, you hear the music, what a wonderful world. Right away, you start to smile, you can't help it. But SMILE is a great acronym. And when you learn the power of the acronym and you internalize it, utilize and leverage it, it will enhance and change your life. Because SMILE stands for seeing miracles in life every day. <laughs> seeing miracles in life every day. So just think about, here's a simple proof, right? A million plus people around the world did not get out of bed. Everybody watching had got out of bed today. You're alive. To be alive is to celebrate the essence of life. Life means living inspirationally for eternity, not just for now, for eternity. What you do makes a difference in the world for posterity, whether it's your own or others. So when you learn to see miracles, you are alive. That's a great one. But the other thing is, do you have water to drink? Do you have food to eat? Do you have family? Do you have friends? Do you have a place to sleep? All of those are miraculous. Think about it. We're in the midst of pandemic, Chris, right? They're going to look back on this year, 2020, in the middle of the summer. People are going to be watching this, God willing, decades from now, a century from now, like the 1919 flu, right? And say, what did they do in 2020? Well, they fought the pandemic by using their thoughts. I happen to be a pothead, by the way. Pothead? Yes, because pot stands for power of thinking, the power of thought. When you use that, that's the pandemic we can infect everybody with. Positive, purposeful, powerful, pleasant. So now, think about this. It still takes me 10 minutes to get out of bed in the morning. But guess what? I get out of bed. Now, I'm going to show everybody, I hope you're watching this, I'm going to stand up from this chair and sit down. You ready, Chris? 
Look at that. I did it so fast you couldn't even see it. <laughs> you know why? Because I can't even sit up right now. So all those things I told you, I'm. you see my arms moving, you see me, but I can't even stand up and sit up from a chair. I have to push on the things and, ah, but I can do it. So what I've been through over the past number of years is remarkable in two things, or three things. Number one, seeing miracles in life every day. But I got to tell you a quick story, Chris. My eight-year-old niece came over to me a few weeks ago. She said, Uncle Barry, can we spell smile S-M-I-E-L? And I thought about it, I said, smile, smile, why not? I asked her, how come? She says, because then it would stand for seeing miracles in everyday life. <laughs> Out of the mouth of babes, right? But here's where it gets amazing for the people listening, what you're alluding to. In the course of trying to regain some of my mobility, I got involved with something called aquatic therapy. It means they put you in the pool and people thank God, uh, trained uh, people, move your limbs and both your arms, your legs and such like that. Over the course of a number of years, I was able to move my arms over my head. And the other one. And so what they did, these very smart people, great therapists, I am a fan of therapists and nurses, doctors also, but they were the ones who said to me, you're never going to walk again. So I never listened to them. But nurses and therapists, they are all there to be channeling good. That's a cog, by the way, channel of goodness. And what happened was they put flotation devices on my legs so they wouldn't sink, and on my middle so I wouldn't sink, and we started moving my arms over my head, and I was able to swim from one end of the pool to the other. <laughs> what a breakthrough. And then I got into my head because I'm a very perseverant person, I said, you know something, I'm going to keep going back and forth until I can't. And it turned out after a number of months, I kept doing that. I swam a mile one day, Chris, on my back without stopping. It took 98 minutes. But here, I'm in California. I look at this tan, outdoors in a pool. You know, why not? I am swimming. I can't walk, but I can swim. And I said, if I can do a mile one day, guess what? I could do it two days, and then three days, and then four. I'll make the story very short. Today, Chris, I can actually see my tummy. I still have to wear flotation devices on my legs. I have paddles on my hands because they don't close. And I use a snorkel because I can't move my head that much to breathe. But I now swim two miles a day, six days a week. And I've been doing that for 12 years. And I've accumulated, as of today, as of today, 7,759 miles. <laughs> That's swimming from, uh, I'll start, in, not in London, but I'll start on the, on the other side, on the West Coast. Where is it? What's uh, a port down on the West Coast? Uh, Bristol? Not Bristol. Well, okay. some port on the West Coast of England. It's like sailing from England down to uh, the Madeira Islands, and then around the Cape, and then all the way down to South Africa. Wow. That's how many miles. Amazing. And Bar Barry, I want, I want to just ask you, well, you, you, know, you, you were, had a hugely successful business career. You, know, you, you set up and sold businesses and, diamond, and diamonds and all sorts of things. And you had, I, I, all I can imagine is that you had the most incredible life and uh, you know, very, what would be perceived a very successful life um, um, entrepreneurially and you know you had your your your, guess your homes and your home and your pool and live in a beautiful part of the world and then you you struck down by this and I know you were uh, you know in hospital and uh, obviously couldn't move and, and I just wonder how do you did you deal with that but also there was a there was a moment wasn't there when you were you were asked you know about why you know kind of never complained um I just wonder what the what was the catalyst for this you deciding that um, you were going to live the, your life joyfully from, you know, must have been a difficult place. You, you know. Let's be blunt. It was difficult. <laughs> I'm a quadriplegic mm. overnight. Now, the real difficult difficulty was that my wife of now 44 years, then it was only uh, 27 years, still loves me, still takes care of me, had to deal with all the financial issues of no longer being in business, what do you do with all that? Now, thank God we had already set up certain things, so we had some cash flow and such. But, hello, 
overnight, not expecting to be completely paralyzed. I had, through some kindness, or telling you just a moment, uh, established something that was of tremendous benefit. But I had a son, 17 years old, who sees his father hiking with him and being able to hike as well or better than he. I mean, he was 17 and I was 55. That was just a few months ago, now paralyzed. So in the hospital, well, about the third week in, they're moving me around, picking me up from the bed and putting me in a gurney and moving me around, doing tests and things like that. And there was one particular nurse, it happened to be a male nurse, who had been with me three or four days in a row now. And he stopped the gurney in the hospital uh, corridor before he brought me back to the room. And he leaned down and he asked me, Mr. Shaw, I have a personal question. Can I ask you? And now I can barely speak now, but not just my body, but I can barely speak. And I said, yes. He said, look, I, I work with people in your situation all the time. This is what I do. This is my specialty. I've never met anybody who's not angry and bitter. How come you're not angry and bitter? And I realized, Chris, at that moment, he was asking me the great existential question. Why me, God? Why did you do this to me? But I wasn't asking that. I was asking, why me? I'm just a regular guy. I'm standing up in the morning, I'm paralyzed at night. Now I'm here. What am I supposed to do? What's my purpose? And I'm ready to serve. That was my thought. And at that moment, Chris, a calm came over me that I had not known in 55 years of being on the earth. I didn't know if it was going to walk again. I had no idea what was going to happen. But I knew that I was here to be able to do something of benefit. And that gave me strength, tremendous strength. Now, I will tell you also, it didn't come out of nowhere. I was raised in a place called Boston, Massachusetts. So even British people know about Boston. And people all over the world have heard of Boston. So I, was, I was born in Boston, raised in a place called Brookline, which is just adjacent to Boston. Very idyllic childhood, as it were. Why? Because I have a father and a mother and two younger sisters and a happy home to be raised in. Interestingly enough, my mother was born with a red wine stain over three quarters of her face and a bit pop mark as well. Now, even in today's environment where kids know bullying and everybody's happy and larkish and going to school and hugging and all kinds of people are cruel, especially kids, right? Imagine growing up with that kind of situation on your physical being. And yet, my mother, Frances Ida Goldstein Shore, she called Fig or Figs when she got married, she got married, was apparently one of the most upbeat, ebullient, happy people you ever meet. And we knew this, my sisters and I, because we spoke to her friends from high school. She said, oh, she was always this way. This is her. She didn't just go through it or overcome it. She was a model of happiness. She was joy incarnate. So I grew up around this model without anybody saying, well, this is the way you have to be. I watched a, a person of happiness and joy and strength. So when it came to situations that are certainly untoward, difficult, no question about it. And that's why today we have the 11 strategies, as you mentioned, called 11 Strategies for Living in Joy Daily, no matter the circumstances or vicissitudes. Is it easy? Well, no. But can everybody do it? Yes, I'm just a guy. Everybody can do this. Why? Because if you learn to have purpose in life and you want to be of service, you want to go mad, you want to make a difference, and you find the good in all the things that you're doing, then that's what's going to come out. Your inner being is really the resource. And you just pull on that and it will come out. It will happen. So this, this barrier is about, about you know, we've, you know, we can sometimes put a mask, can't we, on uh, and, and hold back our natural kind of you know, loving, kindness, joyful and nature that maybe we once were when we were little young, young children. And, I, and I'm interested, what, what is your perception of uh, of the british and uh <laughs> how do you how do you americans perceive us and and uh you know how do you think we can uh take our joy to a, a new level 
Okay, so I'll just uh, a quick story. Online, because we've, we've got about twenty minutes or so left left okay, before we. Uh, quick story. Uh, what come from you? Nineteen sixty nine. I was a college dropout. Hello, everybody. Thank God I've done very well in business and had a lot of success. I went back to college eight years, six years later, but leave that aside. I was a college dropout, 1969. I said, I don't want to do the same, but I want to go travel. So uh, in those days, you could still buy a one-way ticket, Chris, from Boston to London. Then I was going to, my goal was to go to Amsterdam because that was the center of the hip culture at the time, hip alternative culture. Amsterdam was the crossroads. So I bought a ticket, one way ticket, it cost me $200. And I had $250 in my pocket. They almost didn't let me in, by the way, when I came to customs and such like that. I remember having to write an essay of why I was going to be there and I wasn't going to stay more than 30 days. So they let me in with a 30 day visa. But I had a couple of friends. I love British people. Because, yes, it seems that the exterior and the general M.O. of British people is a bit reserved compared to an American like me. <laughs> now, am I typically American? Yes. <laughs> am I more American than most Americans? Yes. And yet, when I was with some of my British friends and acquaintances, all of a sudden, I became a spark. I wasn't purposely doing it. And I saw a an exuberance that was, let's say, two or three levels higher than the normal, mm -hmm. what we'll call stiff upper lip, as you and I have discussed, you know, comes from thousands of years back, not just the, for the British. And, and I have always found the British to be fun people. I like, by the way, I happen to like the F-U word. I use it a lot. When my, when I use a lot of four-letter words. We might even use them during the show. But the four-letter words that we use are Positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant, like live, life, grow, whole, holy, free. And the four letter F U word is fun. Fun, yes. F U, capital N, capital N. So people say to me, but Barry, sure, fun is only spelled with three letters. Not in our world, the world of the positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant. It's F U, capital N, capital N. So those of you are watching later after the show, when you see your family and friends, you point the finger and say, F U, everybody. Remember to add quickly, capital N, capital N. I said, where'd you get that? I heard this crazy American, Barry Shoy said, have fun. So I love British. Um, I have been a fan of British humor for decades. I mean, let's be very blunt, whether it's uh, Spike Milligan, Mulligan or uh, Monty Python in here. When I was growing up, I used to listen to a show. You might even remember it, Chris, called My Word. No, I don't know. <laughs> you never heard of my word? I don't know if Chris is really British, but. <laughs> I'm just not quite old enough, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I, we have to see things here. Barry Shaw doesn't just have this. This is not a, I didn't just put it on now to say, hey, I am wizened and therefore I have wisdom. Uh, <laughs> I'm a bit older than Chris, but there was an amazing show on the BBC called My Word. And again, these very clever, tongue-in-cheek, fun British uh, commentators. They were all from the world of uh, writing, publishing, and and uh, the BBC channel. And they would take words and make fun with them, the stories and such like that. So I've always found the British to be what I call joy-filled people just waiting for somebody to pop the cork. <laughs> so I will urge every British person, pop your cork and let some of it flow over. You don't have to be bubbly like me. You don't have to be champagne, but you can just pop your cork a little bit and let some of that come through. So it's the, um, if I, yeah, do you have a question, Chris? No, I, was just, I was just thinking that that's, when you do that, though, it, it is infectious, isn't it? It catches yeah. By the way, again, infectious. This is the infection we want to spread. Uh, two things. I want to urge everybody. I have a free gift. May I talk about the free gift? The free yeah. gift is if you go to my website, which I'm sure you'll have up there and we can discuss later, is www, remember what it stands for, dot barryshore.com. The free gift is if you send me an email to barry at barryshore.com and you put in the title subject, free gift, I'm offering a free gift of one week full access to the 11 strategies for living in joy daily. Yes, one week free. Usually I give it uh, 24 hours, but I love you. 
you, Chris, Rupert, Muriel, I mean, and everybody watching throughout the world, remember? You know, we're touching every part of the former British Empire. That's amazing. And everybody should be sharing this. And SHARE, by the way, stands for Spreading Happiness and Rejuvenating Energy. That's what SHARE is about. So this is the infection we want to spread. So I'm going to give you just a, a, a two-minute uh, an idea of the, the distinction between excitement and enthusiasm, because people see Barry Shore and say, hey, wow, what an excited guy. Thank you, but I am all, I'm really enthusiastic. That's really the key. So excitement, if you know your Latin well, C-I-T-E means an item or a thing, right? And X, E-X means from the outside. So think of a, a pot of water or a kettle we're gonna put on to brew some tea, and you turn up the heat, and what happens? All of a sudden, the water starts bubbling and creating steamy, and we know that's good, right? But what if you either turn down the heat or you remove the pot or the kettle? Well, all of a sudden, the water just goes back, right? That's excitement. That's a force from the outside affecting the situation. Excitement, but it will dissipate as soon as you take away the exterior. Enthusiasm is different. The same roots, T-H-U and E-N. Now, E-N means inner. T-H-U in Greek is the name for God. So when godliness, that energy that comes directly from the source is inside of you, E-N, then it doesn't dissipate. Yes, can you increase it a bit sometimes and decrease it at your will? Absolutely, but it doesn't go away. That's enthusiasm. That's what we do in life. Life is for living. Life is based on love. What is love? Living on vibrant energy. When you tap into the vibrational plane, then you're not like a rubber band which stretches and then zoom. It's continuous. And it doesn't cause the mind or body to be frazzled like excitement can do. Excitement can do that. You can get so excited and then, oh, it goes away because something happened and, well, this and that. As you know, what, yes. Yeah, so, so Barry, um, this, is, this, is, this is great. It's, uh, and, and, it's, uh, and I feel very enthusiastic at this point in time and uh, I'm a little bit excited as well, if I'm honest. Um, but, you know, we're in, we're in tough times at the moment, Barry. Um, there's a global pandemic. Um, people are concerned at the moment about their businesses, about their families, about whether we're going to be in lockdown, whether we can keep on operating. It's, you know, there's potentially we could allow a lot of things to make us feel stressed. What's your your view on stress? Is it a necessary evil? Um, can we overcome it? Can we can we shift in ourselves into this state of enthusiasm, irrespective of what's going on? So the simple answer is yes. However, let's explore. First of all, you mentioned the word shift. Now, most people, everyone knows how to spell it, but most people leave out the F part of the word and they think that's what happens in life. No, we want to shift attitude. Remember to, when, when you speak, you have to emphasize the F part. Now, here's something very interesting, I think. Of acronyms. Stress, I have been studying. It happens to be the most searched word on the internet after COVID and pandemic. Stress, everybody's feeling it, you're right. Whether it's in business, home, money. And those are the three greatest stressors in life. Stress stands for, Chris, stomach turning reality, enabling self-sabotage. Ah, what could happen? Lost my job, lost my house, it's in there, going. You can find many things that will cause, and they're all real. Stomach turning reality, enabling self sabotage. Let's use the Barry Shore version, the enthusiastic version. Stress stands for stomach turning reality. Same situation, enabling self success. What can I do in this situation that will either alleviate stress, mitigate it, reduce it? Now, one of the ways I urge people to do is go to barryshore.com and look at the 11 strategies for living in joy daily, practical practices, tips, and tools. 
Because if you let stress work on you for self-sabotage, it will not just hurt you, it will kill you. Because stress causes many of the ailments that we know that exist in the world, heart disease, diabetes, anxiety, depression, skin ailments, gastrointestinal problems, sleeplessness, low sex drive. I mean, those are things that are just debilitating and harmful. So why not choose, you used this term earlier, I think maybe Rupert did, the ability to choose, I'm gonna share with everybody six words that internalize them will not only help you, but enable you to succeed. And these six words are choice, not chance, determines your destiny. Choice, not chance, determines your destiny. Again, one of the greatest things about the British people if there is such a thing, the British people, and I believe there is, is a, a, a culture that is part and parcel of the genius of the British people, an island people, a seafaring people that not only lived its own way, but was able to travel the entire world, the entire world, and build what others call an empire, now which is um, sort of in disrepute this, these days about the word empire, I happen to think it's wonderful, and bring to bear its own unique abilities to live and bring together lots of people. Give a simple example, by the way, we're going, we're going to use stress, but take the subcontinent of India one of the great democracies of the world, a bulwark today against potential communist China and other things. But India or India didn't exist as a country when the British came there. India was a collection of dozens, if not hundreds of small, petty little groups. Sometimes they were bigger, sometimes smaller, and they were continually warring. Now that was of course, one of the reasons why a small British force could actually, uh, um, coalesce, but form a situation where there was actually a sense of something called India, which today is its own country with over a billion, almost a billion, 1.3 billion people. Do they live in harmony? No. But do they live in more harmony than they used to? And yes, that's because of the British. And that's where stress comes in back out. The ability to take a stomach turning reality and say, this is for self-success. Now, Barry Shaw can say this, standing up in the morning and I'm paralyzed at night and I have to deal with the rest of my life and say, now, if I'm gonna constantly, will I ever walk again? Will I do it? Okay, is it simple? Absolutely not. Is it enthusiastic? Yes, you can be enthusiastic, by the way, without having to be Barry Shaw, be you. We're not talking about people walking around like this. We're talking about the ability to live in harmony with yourself and with others, to be a conduit of goodness in life, to live the four principles. By the way, we all know DNA was discovered where? What country? Britain. Yeah. Britain. Yeah. You got great scientists. Make a mark in the world. You make a difference. You're mad, people. DNA, there are only four aspects, four proteins in DNA. Every single human being, whoever existed in the history of the world, has these four same ATCG, they're called, right? They're the first letters of the word. That's our physical DNA. We also have what I call a spiritual DNA, Chris. And the spiritual DNA are the letters J H P L. Joy, happiness, peace, and love. Every single human being has these four spiritual aspects of their DNA. It's a matter of accessing them. And when you know that you can literally touch and access the positive, purposeful, powerful, pleasant essence of you, why oh you? This show is only about one thing, you, everybody watching. It's all about you, EW. You want to be the best you in the world, why? Because when you do that, you're the best you. You create more harmony in the world. You build bridges. You bring more joy, happiness, peace, and love, especially now. The best way to defeat the pandemic is with this. How you think helps determine who you are. Yeah. I, I share with you this. Speech is the vessel 
that channels blessing into the world. And I, as a conscious, conscientious person, try with all of my being to continually dispense blessing. That's who we are. We're blessing distributors. And I'm always saying here, I think is uh, it's, it's it's our responsibility to take you know 100 responsibility for this, to to access this, and to bring these characteristics of joy, happiness, peace, and love uh, within our work. And you know, that's kind of actually the natural order of things. It's when we get into fear, isn't it? And that uh, that's and we allow ourselves to stay in fear that that starts to have you know implications, um, destructive implications, and negative implications for us personally and our interactions in the in the world and i'm just i'm interested um as well for, for people here if anybody if you've got a question that you want to ask barry we've got a few minutes you know very happy to take um uh, take a question or two if anyone wants to wants to type and and take that opportunity uh, see barry's enjoying sorry yeah uh, david's enjoying this which is great we're getting some nice um thumbs up and things like that but uh it'd be lovely to lovely to hear from you oh we just saw a nice comment by renato good fellow what a great name renato he says, his version of choice, not chance, determines your destiny. Eyes wide open, no blinkers on, taking the signs and opportunities that life provides. Absolutely. Because as Chris mentioned, fear is an acronym. Now, many acronyms of fear, but the one I prefer, like the most at the moment is false expectations appearing real. Yeah. They're false. Now, when you live in love, and you push aside fear because they, they, they can't coexist. Light and darkness cannot coexist by definition. So when the mind is working in the process of living in love, living on vibrant energy, then you will be in the highest level, which is called gratitude. Gratitude is that emotion which has the longest shelf life. To be grateful for the ability to breathe is so wonderful. Now, a lot of people are grateful because I get a paycheck, I made a sale, something happened. And you can say that, okay, but that lasts for a moment. Now, begin the process of learning to be grateful for moving your toes, <laughs> which I can't do, still can't do. It's 15 minutes later, 15 years later. So I can't move my toes. But guess what? I'm alive. To be grateful for breathing, to be grateful for clean water, grateful for food, grateful for family, for friends. Gratitude is that essential emotion which now brings to bear everything in life that will enable you to live with enthusiasm, which takes stress and makes it stomach-turning reality, enabling self-success. Here is a guarantee from Barry Shore, the American, but the ambassador of joy. Here's your guarantee. Yeah, you awesome. cannot fail. Mm. And Pranita asked, I know you talked about your mom, your mother, um, but anywhere else that you get, you've got to you know, get your inspirations from to help you live this joyful life? The answer is yes. And I am blessed to say that sometimes I seek out such people and sometimes they come to life because that's, by the way, when you begin to live with enthusiasm, you are working in the law of attraction. By the way, law is a great word. Some people hear law, they think, oh, the law. The law is a great word. It stands for love and wisdom. That's what law is, love and wisdom. The law of attraction is when you're living in purpose, joy, happiness, peace, and love, you attract. So I have a model in business, a man who I've known now for 38 years. He's my senior by about nine years, no, 10 years. And he is a great model for me because not only is he highly successful financially, but he's been through two bankruptcies, <laughs> still highly successful financially. He has a wonderful, loving wife of 56 years. He has two sons and at this point, seven grandchildren. But the point is that he is a model of giving. 
By the way, you can you can sum up the joy of living in one word. Giving. That's the root of success in life. Be a giver. Givers gain. Excellent. Barry, it's been an absolute pleasure. As ever, there's you know, you have to people have to listen back to this uh, around all of the, uh, the the words that you use, but I you know, I get a real sense that uh, we have to appreciate that life has purpose, that we have purpose, that we we should um, by uh, each day, you know, working on ourselves to um, to have joy and happiness and uh, and uh, fun and, uh, and and utilize that to help us go mad and make a difference out there in the world. That we, that has a an impact on everything on our, on our business, our businesses, our lives, our families, those people around us. So thank you so much for today. It's been absolutely brilliant talking with you again. I know we're gonna the blessing. And we're, yeah, and, and I recommend people do go and uh, take that opportunity up with Barry. Check out his 11 strategies. I've been through them with my family. Uh, my kids um, are very, very inspired by them. They sometimes say, Dad, we mustn't look down on people. We only look down on people when we're helping them up. And that came from Barry Shaw. So uh, once again, a big thank you. You can also check out Barry's Keep Smiling cards. Millions of those have been issued around the world. And uh, yeah, thank you for everything you do, Barry. May I leave the blessing? Sorry? May I give a blessing to everybody? You can, yeah. Ready? Go forth. Live exuberantly. Spread the seeds of joy, happiness, peace, and love. <laughs> Go mad. Go mad. Very good. Very good. Something more British, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Barry, thank you very much indeed. Robert, did we, did we live up to expectations? Yes, yes. I have to say, I think it's, you probably only see one other person I know in eccentricity, if I can say the word. And he happens to be coming on there very shortly, actually. So uh, I'll be interested in just a moment. But seriously, that's a very moving uh, story you shared there. I'm so, so sorry. I had absolutely no idea before today what you've personally been through, but the strength you must have and also the inspiration you've had to many other people. Uh, and obviously, Renato shared something about him. Self today, Ronaldo shared a couple of things with me in the past as well. What an impact certain things have had, and obviously you've been able to transform your life or transform many others today. And I found found it sort of truly inspirational. So thank you for that. Um, so I'm sure we'd uh, share that. And Chris, uh, uh, you know, I don't know how uh, you found this amazing guy, but you obviously have. So uh, thank you for that. Yeah. Um, yeah now we have uh, just moving on a little bit onto the next uh, segment. Um, uh, we, we like to obviously feature things at different points that people where people do amazing things. Obviously, we've seen the best and worst out of people over the last few months. I would like to think in the last three months or so, we've seen a number of people really come to do uh, some amazing things. We've got someone who's just joining us, or rejoin us just now, uh, by the name of Alex. I had to try and grab some pictures from his uh, Instagram account. Um, as a number of you will know, he... Uh, uh, managed to do the three peaks. I think, Alex, do you want to <laughs> let me introduce to the uh, live stream if I can find my mouse, be able to do it? Hang on a second. Uh, so, yeah, just press this magic button here. So, Alex, so tell us a little bit more, a bit more about your adventure that uh, you've done and uh, how things unfolded. Because last time we spoke, yeah, um... you were to being a bit of a nutter in the nice and possible words, and you suddenly, yeah, yeah, that's okay, but. I, I want to start with Barry. Your words are incredible. Um, it's it's a blessing to be able to be sat here and listening to what you've got to say. So thank you for sharing that. Um, Alex, back at you, kid. <laughs> yeah. So I um, I can't remember the question, Rupert, but I suppose I'll just kick off with saying that the the Tree Peaks is actually very much in line with with what Barry is actually just saying there, and what I know this this show stands for, and that is giving back to. To, to everyone that we can because when we give back we always receive back uh sorry as we give we always we always receive twice as much back and it's it's about once we can kind of share that message and share the idea of of giving back it's everyone wins from it um and i suppose that was what for me came out of the three peaks yeah now alex as a point of interest we spoke on the show with uh, chris and Miral about two or three weeks ago and um you go wandering around with these two halves of tree cut in half and I yeah. coming with terrible blisters and everything else like that. You managed to find this fantastic rucksack, and uh, you know it was uh, absolutely amazing what you managed to achieve. 
Uh, so tell us a bit about what you were experiencing, because it was very nice ones. You were going up uh, uh, Ben Nevis. Ben Nevis, you were really on a real high. And there was nothing that was going to stop you. By the time you got to the next mountain, which was Garfell, you could see the stress and the air and everything else sort of really, uh, you know, trying to push desperately hard through, but it's clearly proving to be a real struggle. Tell us a bit about what the journey that you went on with that. It's a, it's a really interesting point because for everyone who knows me, which is on this call is of Muriel, Rupert and Chris, I, I have this childish side of me of thinking that everything's a bit of a joke and a game and a bit of a class clown. And Ben Nevis was that to start with. You can see by the photos that were featured there that I'm wearing a Viking hat with female um, or with uh, plaits coming off the side. And, I'm, and I thought to myself, I'll run down the finish of it. So I went up. It was a bit, a bit of a the quickest I could possibly go up. They're wearing 26 kilos. But then I ran down after thinking not much of it. And then I didn't I didn't really take into consideration that 26 kilos bearing down on my legs is going to take a bit of a strain. <laughs> So when we got to the second mountain, I started climbing. My legs were in such a state that they were cramping the entire way up. So my calves were cramping. My my hamstrings were giving out. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, that clown that was on Ben Nevis, joking around, creating the content, being the guy, that guy, yeah, it's funny. It's a showman, right? But me personally was suffering for it four hours later, five hours later, trying to climb this second mountain with this tree. And then it didn't dawn on me, it didn't really hit me until I was coming down the second mountain, coming off of Scarfell at 10 o'clock at 9.30 at night. Every maybe six steps that I was taking, the bag was jumping up and down and it was just blistering into my shoulders, but my calves were cramping at the same time. So I was trying to balance, trying to get this bag off the, the weight off my shoulders to stop it blistering, but my legs were cramping. It was making me realize that idiot, that clown that was on Ben Nevis trying to prove a point or trying to be the showman, is now the same person holding me back right now. And it was this weird moment of like, maybe I, maybe that class clown needs to die. Maybe that clown side of Alex needs to die and or be gone. And I need to give birth to this newer version of me that's, that's setting these bigger challenges and that's ready to be consistent like that. Like we said before, I wasn't consistent. There was a class clown on one, but then I was this explorer on the other trying to achieve this incredible, incredible feat. And that's where I really started to struggle. Uh, I don't know if that answers your question, but that's how I saw it. Yeah, no, it, it, it does. And uh, obviously, you managed to do the third one, uh, the uh, Snowden, uh, of course. And you managed yeah. to. Get to the top. Uh, I was trying to desperately find that picture that you took at the top of the mountain, uh, but couldn't uh, couldn't find it. But uh, I mean, what would you say was your the worst moment of your trip, and what would you say was the best moment? When and what was the real learning from that? You now, if you went down deep, what was your uh... what did you come away with from that? Uh, I would say there was two learnings because there was an, this isn't documented at all on Instagram, but there was an, ex, there was a very heated argument at three o'clock in the morning between the driver and, and, um, someone who was climbing with me. And it was because tiredness was kicking in, fatigue was kicking in and the, 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 um, the expectation that the challenge had unknowingly brought because when we did it before, we were finishing the event within 24 hours, but by three o'clock in the morning, we were approaching the 23 hour mark and we hadn't even started the final mountain and we had two hours left. So we were all up for around 28 hours at this, or sorry, we were all up for around 24 hours at this point before the third mountain had even started. So in my mind, I, I was hearing this argument. I was hearing what I had to finish and I was feeling the pain in my legs. And I was like, do I just call it? Do I just quit? And in that, and I think, I know Chris has said about it before, and I know we've all spoken about it before, but this is why you need something bigger than yourself in terms of a why. Because if it wasn't for the fact that I was doing this for the Mind Charity about, you know what, we need to be the examples, we, we need to lead by example. If I didn't have Mind Charity, if I didn't have all the expectations and all that of other people around me keeping me accountable, the DM messages on social medias, the texts that I had got before, the good luck stuff, this, the charity we were doing for, if I hadn't have got that, I would have just given up. I would have just gone, you know what, we'll try better next time. I won't run up and down the first mountain. I'll be more sensible to this stuff. But it's when it's three o'clock in the morning and you're reminding two people arguing with each other that are sleep revived, uh, sleep, um, uh, what's the word, deprivation. Food is, is not available because it's three o'clock in the morning. Nowhere's open. You're reminding them, why did we start? Why did we even begin this journey in the first place 24 hours ago? That's why we have to finish it. 
Um, and that's that's my biggest takeaway from it. It set a goal so big that at two or three o'clock in the morning, when you're like, you know what, we could just go home, you're reminded of why you stick you stick through it. Yeah, no, I love, love that, Alex. Now, um, Alex, you've done an amazing job for Mind the charity, and uh, why why particularly the charity Mind, and uh, what was your big, uh, you know, why have you particularly related to that challenge? Um, what has the, had the big, biggest impact for, for uh, as far as that's concerned? In terms of how it's helped you, in terms of helped you, and also perhaps other people. Yeah, I hear three questions there, and, and we'll answer as, as best as I can. The the reason that particular charity is is since 2015, 75% of all suicides have been men, and that's a statistic that I I understand is a lot in the mo at the moment in terms of equality and and so on and so forth. But we can't deny the fact that 75% of people killing themselves in the world at the moment are men. We have to acknowledge those statistics, and we have to take that into consideration. So for me. It was, it was about putting a tree on my back to raise awareness that we need to have these conversations. We need to start the dialogue of why are people going through this? Regardless, although, although it's regardless of your gender, we have to acknowledge the fact that people are killing themselves and we have to bring that to light. We have to have these conversations. Um, we have to, and it, it, this event, the only reason I wanted to do it is to raise is to start that conversation let's have the conversations of what's going on in your mind right now let's apply empathy to everything that we do how am i about to make you feel let's have that conversation um and my biggest takeaway from it would be the three peaks is the beginning of something in, 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 extremely beautiful this is not the end now this is this is this is just the beginning this this climb is just the the foundation of what was is now to come from my brand getting to phenomenal from me alex this is just this is just the beginning of it all yeah, love it, Alex, love it. Now, uh, Alex made a, a promise, which was witnessed on air, by the way, on Facebook and on YouTube, and by everyone on this call, so apart from Barry, where you made a certain promise, didn't you, if you got up to £2,300. What was that promise, Alex? Oh, well, that promise, Rupert, would be to shave my head. And yeah. um, unfortunately, we, we, we missed that target, as you rightly pointed out, 72%, £1,665. Yeah. No, I'm no. surprised you didn't put in the remaining seven hundred pound needed to top that up. I, I'm, I'm just throwing that out there. I thought you would have done that, but yeah, no. um, well, there we go. This is <laughs> everyone, isn't it? So, um, so I, I think as of yesterday morning or this morning, when I checked, it was up to that figure there, seventy-two percent funded. I personally want to laugh my head off and see Alex uh, bald, uh, especially as <laughs> um, he's quite keen to meet certain uh, young person in the next two weeks. And me, I want to see it as well. <laughs> uh, so I think we should all try and help Alex get to his two thousand three hundred pounds. Just quickly, just quickly, let's just quickly go back to the caveat that I applied to that. I did say if we achieve it by the eighth of August, and that's five oh, days ago. So I just, I just want to throw that caveat out there. No, I didn't hear that, Alex. I'm sure you didn't say that. No, <laughs> Muriel, you're not, you're not on my side here, are you? No. <laughs> There's too many witnesses, mate. Uh, so <laughs> what you need to do, if anyone, uh, thank you for those, by the way, have already contributed to this. I know that uh, a number of people have, so thank you very much for that. Uh, the, if you want to donate to Mind, um, it's, you can go direct to it, it's a, which is businessgrowthbureau.com forward slash Mind. It redirects to the Just Giving page of Alex's. Just go straight there. Uh, very simple to do. Let's try and help Alex smash through that barrier. And I want to see Alex bald in a week's time. All right. So let's make that the big challenge. You're going to hate me forever, Alex. And uh, it is deserved. But seriously, though, uh, but well done, mate. You've done very well with that climb. Uh, and I'm sure we're all very proud of you and what you've done for the the charity. So um, on that particular note, um, we'll uh, just do a little bit of a quick wrap up and then we'll let everyone uh, go home as it were. And next week, we've got uh, uh, Chris's guest, Mike Pagan, who is uh, joining us. Um, and he's talking about build good mental wealth and make a difference. Um, how do you do what you do and what to, how you love what you do? And why building the right team around you is so important. How finding your Zen leads to a life living with contentment. How empowering others to achieve their maximum potential could be good for your mental wealth. And why learning through failing is so important. And something obviously Barry mentioned a moment ago actually. And how you can turn good uh, uh, in, and channel that for good. Uh, so do feel you can join us next week um, in uh, just a quick reminder as well, because we made a bit of a change this week. 
uh, we've decided the what was the Tuesday event to move that to Thursdays. And Barry was very torrent. Thank you for Barry for that, by the way. Um, so we've actually made that so it happens before the live stream each week. So at four o'clock, or in fact, better still, if you're new and join us for the first time, join us at 3.45 um, every Thursday. That's 3.45 British summertime, uh, so long as that lasts four. And it's an opportunity to network and collaborate. And I have to say, the discussion was actually quite lively in the last session. And guess what? It was talking about millennials as well, which is quite interesting. So, um, so the energy that they bring. And I think Barry shows everyone up there, because Barry, I think you're even more interested than uh, our friend Alex is. So, um, and following that is uh, uh, Mike Pagan. If you register for that, uh, I'll explain how in just a moment. Nicely, you can attend both. It's, uh, it's presented as a flexi ticket, so you can attend one or both. Uh, one leads straight on into the other. Um, and also, we'll mention that in September, uh, we have got a three day mini conference, which is uh, just realized we've got to put the date there, but it's actually the third week of September, uh, starting on September the 21st. And uh, it's going to be three 90 minute sessions over three days. And on the fourth day, we've got a, a, another special guest who some of you remember from before, who is called Barnaby Winter. He's going to be doing a, a follow on session. Uh, with everyone there and that will be preceded by the uh, networking as well so do feel you can free to book those again there's no charge for those and the way you get to those is very simply going to the business growth your website choosing the events drop down uh, choosing either or both of those uh, ideally choose both um, and if you're wanting to uh, attend regularly on the live streams or the networking you can choose the recurring option down here you've either got the option of continue or hit recurring if you choose recurring it saves you having to book in each week. Now, if you want to take part in the three-day uh, mini conference, which is about bring bring all sales forward, uh, then that's a separate link, which again is available from the same events drop down, and uh, you can register now for that. And we'd love to, to see you. Um, so, uh, just to, to quick wrap up, uh, we obviously are here to support you on your journey. We re realize that running a business can be a pretty lonely place, whether you're a company of one or whether you're employing hundreds of people. Um, if you want to set yourself a reminder, you can do so on Facebook, also on YouTube. Uh, do hit the subscribe button and hit that bell. And do feel free to share it uh, with other people. We obviously want to grow the community and we'd love you all to be involved. Here are the contact details for everyone here now, and particularly for Barry. Uh, Barry, it's barryshaw.com. Uh, Barry's number is there. Obviously, it's a US number, so you, from the UK, you might need to proceed, proceed it with two zeros, then a one. Obviously, from the US, you don't need to do that. And Barry's email address is barry at barryshaw.com. And a quick reminder, so we can see Alex Balls next week or the week after, it's visitgrowthbureau.com forward slash mind. And obviously, um, any contributions are gratefully accepted. So on that note, um, just a quick wrap up from everyone. Uh, so let me just uh, try and uh, remove that there. Um, I, 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 just as a point, Barry, what uh, thoughts have you got? Anything you'd like to wrap with as far as today is concerned? If I may, thank you, first of all, Rupert, Chris, Muriel, Alex, again. A delight, an honor, a privilege to be with you and all of the hundreds of thousands of people throughout the world watching and listening. I would like to do one thing on the slide that you had, very controversial idea. Be an act hole and thrive. Now, what does that mean? An ask hole. Well, ask stands for always seek kindness. And hole stands for helping others live exuberantly. Alex, that's what you're doing out there, kid. Always seek kindness and help <laughs> others live exuberantly. So talk to your friends. Hey, you're an ask hole. Yes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I would like to say one last point, and that is being alive is the greatest benefit of all. When you do that, you live with enthusiasm, and you're here for a purpose to share, then you will produce goodness in the world. We can combat everything if we use our minds, our words, and our deeds. Be a pothead. The power of thought Help everyone achieve destiny. Love it. Barry, thanks so very much. Now, on that note, Chris, what would you like to add? Well, I, th I think um, just, I don't know, I, I, don't know. I, I really um, 
you know, I really believe that uh, we need to access more of our inner joy and happiness. And uh, I think there's takes personal responsibility. There's a discipline there. Um, I like the uh, this, this ongoing enthusiasm uh, r rather than just excitement. Um, so lots of things to take out from today. There always was, is when I talk to jo jo uh, Barry, but there's also a feeling that you get when you're around Barry that I think we need to be mindful of uh, when we're going out in the world that people will get a feeling from us and they, they people can pick up on where they were feeling happy, energetic, joyful, and that has an impact on them, on their day, on their work, on their life. So, you know, there's a responsibility out there if you want to make a difference uh, to go out and be be this uh, this person. So, uh, yeah, thank you. And uh, well done, Alex. Yeah, lovely. Thank you very much. Uh, God bless you. That's good. I'll come to you in a moment, just uh, in a second, Alex. Miro, come on, tell us what you've got to share. Well, Barry, thank you. I mean, you said you were privileged to be on our show. Um, I, th I think it's the other way around, actually. We're definitely privileged to, to hear you for the last 40 minutes. Um, you were inspiring. And in fact, I would like to take you to Ibiza with me. Um, have you been to Ibiza? I'm here to serve. <laughs> <laughs> In Ibiza, it's, it's, you would love it because the people there do not judge on your age or appearance, your background. They just share the love. There's so much energy. You would be in your glory. <laughs> there. I do welcome Alex, Chris, Rupert, Muriel. You ready? A big hug all around. Yeah, One, two, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good. Love it. Love it. Alex, how are you going to compete with that one? Even you with your energy. Come on, how can you compete with it? You can't compete with that guy. Barry's uh Barry stole the show. Yeah. Um I'm not here to steal. I'm only here to give. <laughs> Excellent. Barry, Barry's given us the show. There's no need to top it. No. <laughs> Uh, very good, very good. Uh, but anyway, thank you very much uh, for joining in today. Uh, absolutely delighted for everyone who's been to, uh, to join in. Uh, obviously, this is available through Facebook Live, YouTube, and Periscope. Um, so you can watch the recording afterwards and do feel you can share it. And uh, we'd love to see you next week. So thank you everyone, very much, everyone. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. Yeah, take care. All right, cheers. Thank bye you. Bye. Happy trails to you until we meet again.